Today, I've got a problem that I'm going to ask you guys, because even I don't know what the hell's going wrong with this LR3. You see, it's been a quiet week this week. I've been waiting for the Conrods to come back from the machine shop. Well, he got kind of busy, so there wasn't really much to do. And it was my birthday, so I had a couple of days off. So, we had this LR3 that a customer bought. Never buy a car with problems that, that's known problems, tell me. Don't do it, don't ever do it. So, um, I fixed a few things, like the intermittent uh, starting problem. Well, that was the, the shift lever, that you know, the shifter, the, the, there's a little arm underneath, and it was all seized up, so that wasn't too bad to do. Now it starts and it's great. And I uh, did a hard reset on the computer, so we got rid of all the faults, um, lots of information on how to do a hard set. Really, all it is is take the battery off, uh, take the connectors off the battery, join them together for a few minutes and leave it. And that's it. So that got rid of a lot of faults. But I've got a problem with the air suspension because this customer bought this car when it was on its backside. It was, everything was down and the pump was working intermittently. Couldn't work it out. So I put my um, Lynx system on, which is okay, but it's a bit vague. But the problem is, Land Rover have got uh, fault codes that, that are just basic fault codes but if you put it into a T4 which is the Land Rover machine then it will come on with an extension after that code to be a bit more precise well unfortunately I haven't got that uh, information and being at my age I'm not going to buy a brand new computer system to fix this type of thing so anyway it's chucking out a code of C1A20 which means that it says that the compressor isn't filling the system fast enough. Hmm. Somebody's already replaced the compressor on this for a, a brand new style with a TK something. I don't know. Do you know something? My enthusiasm and, in, and knowledge of this is absolutely zero. I don't really want to do it. But I've fixed their suspension before. So anyway, it's throwing out this code. And I've tried all sorts of stuff. It goes for about 30 seconds, and then cuts out and throws a code. Same one, time after time after time. It was chucking out three codes, uh, but now I've got it down to one. And it always seems to be that the system isn't filling up fast enough. Strange. So, it could be one of two things. You see that the compressor's not putting about out enough air, or it's not sucking in enough air. There's another thing to think about. It might not be sucking air in, through the air intake, it could be blocked. Well, I've already checked that and I actually put it, blew through it. So I thought, well, if I can blow through it, it can suck through it. I don't think there's any non-return valves in it. But I'm going to run it without the, the, without the uh, air intake or the filter or anything on and see how it goes. Well, we're going to see that in a minute on the bench. But this is my question. Information's, there's lots of people doing these type of things. But to actually pinpoint data is, is quite difficult. Now I've, I'm sort of working this car out now to think if this compressor's okay then I suspect there's some valves that are sticking shut and not allowing the car to lift. Now I did think it was the proportion like there's there's a block of valves just after the compressor and that switches the tank on and off like the reservoir but first of all, I looked at the, I looked at, thanks to this, uh, well, some, some, some manual I found somewhere, I don't know where it was. But it had the pneumatic circuit diagram, which was very helpful, because I thought it filled the reservoir first, and then the rest of the system, but it doesn't. It fills the system, and then the reservoir. Clever. Well, not that clever, because if Land Rover thought about the products, they wouldn't put air suspension on in the first place, would they? It's only a gimmick. I fancy going off-road in one of these, eh? You must be nuts. I wouldn't go anywhere with it. Hey, just while I'm on a bit of a ramble, I forgot it was Land Rover's 70th anniversary this year. Complete. I don't do Land Rover, you know, paraphernalia and stuff like that. And that's for other. That's for the Beckhams and things. But um, I was just thinking, my old Defender there's 1984. So what's that? 34 years old. And will this be around in 34 years' time? Don't think so. Makes you think, doesn't it? Anyway, back to the problem. So what I've done is on the bench, I've set up 
a bit of a clever test rig. And this is where you guys come in, who've done these before, because I think I'm, I'm not sure if I'm barking up the wrong tree, but like I said, going back to the pneumatic circuit diagram, the compressor fills the lines first, and there's a pressure gauge in that line. Now, is that pressure gauge saying it's too low pressure? Is the gauge, is the, is the sender faulty? Because I think it's putting out enough pressure, but I have been wrong in the past. So let's go and have a look. This setup looks somewhat crude for testing, but uh, it does work. What I've got is I've got the pump clamped into the vise, because otherwise it vibrates all over the place. And I actually found out that my oil pressure testing kit <laughs> screws straight into the back of the pump. Brilliant! Now this might not be the official way of testing it, but I'm stabbing in the dark here. So like I say, I've got the gauge, I hope you can see the gauge because it's nice and big and it pumps up to 500 PSI. So let's put the pump on, and you tell me what it should be doing. So I'm just going to do this by hand. Wow, bloody bad contacts. I tell you, it's melted all my wires. Just remain a minute. Right, how's this? I'm not saying that my setup is the best, but it might be a little leak somewhere. But I can't, you know, like I say, it's 310, it's dropping a little bit. But if the system's already pressurized, I would have thought if I wanted to pump that back up again. In a few seconds it's back up. Now I say this is only, a, this is only just to see if the pump's working. Uh, but is 300 and something PSI or 20, 21 bar enough to lift the system? I would have thought so. You know. So give me a, give me a sort of an idea. Am I barking up the wrong tree? I don't know. Because I... I'm thinking though that the valves might be stuck because somebody took it. The guy did tell me that this car's been stood for six months uh, and maybe a bit longer. Because it's funny how people bring cars into the shop and then they come back and say how things are going and then they tell you a little bit more. So the first time he told me it's been stood for six months and the other day he told me, well, it's had new airbags replaced on the back. Uh, but the problem is I can't raise the car enough to test if there's any leaks. So there must be some solenoid that's not activating. So, or, or is it just a stuck valve? Should I change all the valves? Where do you stop changing things? You know, it's not my car. I would never have bought it. But Anyway, if, you, if you've got any ideas, jot something down in the comments below. Because, like I say, I could be backing up the wrong tree here. But to me, this seems to be okay. Talk to you later.